Hi designers, it's Haley with Silver Moon Design School and I'm back with another tutorial. This was a viewer request to create a crystal trophy design. I'll show you step by step how to create this mock-up in Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Dimensions so you can impress your clients and have something that looks stunning in your portfolio. As a side note, if you are working on a project and you're stuck, you're not sure where to go next, I do offer one-on-one -on -one virtual coaching sessions on my website, silvermoondesignschool.com. There you can book a time with me, we'll meet on a video call, you'll show me your problem, we'll work through it, and we'll get you unstuck so you can keep designing and meet those deadlines. If you're running short on time and can't really make it through this tutorial, I got you. You can download this mock-up on my creative market, the link is below. All right. Enough for me, let's get to the tutorial. So first I'm starting out in Adobe Illustrator. I have a new artboard that I've created with two layers. The first layer is reference and I've placed my reference image on that layer and locked it so that I don't accidentally move anything as I am tracing over it. And then I have another layer called design, which is my working layer where I've added the design that I wanna put on the front of the trophy and it's also where I will create my 3D shapes. So first things first, we're gonna create this in two pieces and then combine them in dimension. I'm going to trace the front of this trophy and create this diamond shape. So it's at an angle, we're gonna to have to take a little bit of liberty with it. Um, so since it's at an angle, I'm gonna trace that and then also drag it a little bit wider because again, we're at an angle. Let's give it a little bit of width. Um, transform and reflect vertically and then we'll come back move those two together and combine those using Pathfinder so that we have the front of the trophy next I'm going to create that base so I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to create a rectangle that just looks like it would support the base um, if I wanted to I could maybe compare you know maybe that's a little too wide and then for the thickness you know, I could adjust this, but I'm happy with that base. We can always tweak this in dimension too using our tools, but I'm happy with those proportions as they are. So now I'm gonna open up 3D and materials and come up to our main panel and click on extrude. That you can see has given us some depth. If we scroll down to the rotation section, we'll see Okay, wait, let's work with this depth. Um, I'm gonna rotate just a little bit so I can see as we add some of the beveling. So I'm gonna toggle on the bevel and I'm gonna stick with the classic shape. I think that gives us the most of the option here. And I'm also gonna experiment with a, not a twist, but a taper. So tapering is gonna give us that effect at the back. So if we come back to the rotation here, and get it at a similar angle. The bevel, I'm going to reduce the width because we just want like a slight bevel as it would be for the glass. And then I'm also going to choose bevel both sides so that it adds that same corner cut to the back side as well that we are tapering. But the taper, you can adjust to whatever you think looks good. I think for a depth, I'll choose 0.5. And then for the taper, I'll choose 75%. And let's rotate around. Okay, time for the rectangle base here. Same tool, we're gonna to click on extrude. And then we're going to choose a taper. Let's rotate around and see what we're working with here. Yes, so the taper, um, we can also choose a depth of 0.5 again. That looks really good. And then toggling on the bevel, we can apply that to both sides, reduce the width down to about 15%, maybe even 10, let's go, let's go 10%, and then a height of 40%, yeah, with a 10%, height of 40%, what do we have here for the taper height? What do we got for the bevel? Bevel, we have the width of five. I'm happy with both of these shapes. So I'm gonna work on the graphic now so I can export everything at the same time. Um, I have this design here. I have this live text. What I'm gonna do is highlight everything 
go right click and then scroll down to collect for export and choose as a single asset. And this is where I'm gonna call this the graphic. I'm gonna highlight both of the objects that I've created in 3D, go and do the same process, collect for export, but choose as multiple assets. There we can name them base and top. So with these highlighted, I'm gonna export them in two batches. The first I'm going to export as a transparent PNG, and then the 3D objects I'm going to export as an OBJ file that can be found in this drop down menu. So, if you're placing a graphic as a PNG, there are some ways that you can tweak the finishes to make it look like it's been printed on. But if you want it to look like it's been cut into the glass, what we can do is we can make another copy. I'm going to outline by doing Command Shift O, outline all of the text. Make sure it's grouped together and then click on the 3D materials again and then click on extrude. And I'm going to choose a depth of like 0.05, like something super shallow, just enough to give it some substance here. But this way I'll be able to apply more of the materials and give it a realistic look as if it's been debossed, embossed, or um, cut into the glass. So I'm going to choose as a single asset. And then we'll name this one graphic again, but exporting that as an OBJ file. So I'll show you two different options and you can see what you like best. Okay, now we're in dimension 4.0. First thing I'm gonna do, I gotta figure out if there's a way to change a default. I like to have that white background. I don't wanna have it gray. I like a white background. It's clean, it helps me cut out the backgrounds of my shapes without having any weird reflections. So if I figure out how to change that default, I'll let you know. It's probably in the preferences and I've just been too lazy to go there. So <laughs> stay tuned for that update. Um, all right, so I've got this set up. I'm gonna go ahead and click on plus camera because I like this layout. And I'm stretching up the artboard so that it takes up the entirety of this window. I'm just gonna name this front. We'll do front angle. So now I'm just gonna drag and drop in my base and I'm gonna rotate it 90 if it'll let me. There we go. Move it to the ground 90, 90, and just get it set up in the center of that line. Okay. And then I'm gonna bring in the top. Same thing, move that up, rotate 90. And then selecting both of these, I'm gonna to go to the Align tool, which is now on the left. If you watch some of my other tutorials, the Align used to be on the right under Actions, but now it is on the left toolbar. And that way I can center and center. Since the shapes are a little different, I might have to do some tweaking, but that's, that's gonna get us there for now. All right, so I'm gonna call this one Base, and I'm gonna call this one the Top. And if I go to my viewport camera, which lets me explore space, I am going to connect these without messing up my camera bookmark. I also think that I need to, let me look at the reference image. Okay, the reference image is straight up and down, but this is a good place where you could also angle it um, if you wanted to lean it back or etc. But these ones are straight up and down. I might move it back a little bit in space. Yep, that gives a little bit of a lip on the front. And then selecting both of these, I'm gonna hit the folder and it creates this group and I'll just call it trophy. And that allows me to search in the starter assets for glass, drag and drop it over the entire folder so that it creates that material for everything. And if I turn on ray tracing, it will give me a pretty good idea of where we're at with the reflection. Um, let's go back to the front angle. Yeah, that front angle is looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in to get a closer view of this trophy. And then I'm gonna create another camera and this one will be, this one will be left angle. We lost it. Okay, so I forgot to turn on this object space where we start rotating with the object instead of just with the world. Um, so yeah, that is <laughs> definitely better. Okay, so for this angle, I want it to face, this is, gonna, this is what I'm gonna use in my thumbnails. So I want it to kind of be angled towards the text. So that's camera two, I'm gonna move those up. Now it's time to add our graphics. So like I said, I'm gonna give you two options. So the first option is to add your transparent PNG. 
Since it was gray in Illustrator, that's what it's giving here, but I can add metallic so it looks like it's been um, engraved or punched in with like a metallic foil. Um, I can up the roughness, and this is maybe a good spot for me to add my three-point lights that I love. So coming over to our three-point light, dragging that over the entire scene, let's see what it's looking like. I just know since it's glass on white, we're going to have highlights that are just way blown out, but I can fix that. So I'm going to just bring the intensity down for all of the lights to like way, way down. Same with the environment light, just bringing that down so that we have shadows, we have highlights, and nothing looks like it's too overexposed. All right, and with this material, I feel like we can change some of the index of refraction so that the light travels through it a little bit differently so that there's less of the dark areas, but sometimes in dimension, those darker areas won't show up in the final rendering. So I'm just gonna do a test rendering with a medium preset here. I usually don't do tests, but when we're working with glass, it can be really helpful. So I'm just going to do both angles as a PNG because it's going to go really quickly. But yeah, as we can see, some of these darker shadows are coming through and I just don't love that for the legibility of my trophy. And I kind of want to sharpen those up a little bit. So let's see what we've, what do we got? Oh, you know, it's not as bad, but you can definitely see a difference from that preview to here. It just, it's giving a little bit watery. So let's go back, let's change some settings in the material. I'm just gonna play around to be honest because some of these things are way different. We have so many more options and features than we did before. Um, so if I just bring some settings down, um, ambient occlusion and specular level, I brought those down a degree. Um, the edge color, we already have that at white. Well, we can make that pure white to just F times six hex. The interior, translucency, absorption. Oh, here's the index of refraction. This is where we've got the index of refraction. So if I bring that down to maybe 1.25, let's see what all of these settings are doing. Okay, so it's reflecting a lot more. All right, let's do another test render and see where we are now. Yeah, let's just replace because we knew what we were working with before. Okay, I like how this is going. I like this angle a lot. So what I'm gonna do is go back to the lighting and I think we can fix it in there. Oh, I do want my shadow opacity down to 50%. That's why I like that. Um, lights, again, bringing the lighting way, way down, like background lighting to like 20%. And let's see where we go with these. Okay, I hate the front angle, but that's fine because we're not gonna really use that one. If it was really important to you, you could go for it. Okay, so we're still really bright. I think going back to the materials, and guys, apologize. <laughs> and it just be like this sometimes. You've gotta go back and forth and tweak the materials. I'm giving you the real behind the scenes view at how I work. So let's up the index of refraction to like 1.4. Let's go back to the environment with the lights and let's bring it down to like 9% because this is just really rare that it's a white background with glass. Everything's reflecting, everything's bouncing. So what happens if we have the least amount of light I've ever put in a scene? Again, I still hate this angle. <laughs> okay, but the side angle, we're getting somewhere. It's getting better. I do think maybe it was a mistake to change the inside of that a little bit darker. The absorption color, we can even do a little darker gray. Index of refraction, I kind of liked it lower, I think. What if we added just like a little bit of roughness, like just a little more, like 0.1? Okay. Oh, cutie. Well, that's way better. Let's just do like one more tweak with the lights. Fingers crossed that this new lighting is what we want. Okay, I really like that front angle a lot better. I still don't love it. But that, okay guys, like that's pretty close, you guys. Like that's really good. We're missing a little bit of this line still. Um, but I really feel like I can fix that. Like less intensity, less intense. I've never gone this low with the intensity, but I've never had a completely clear object before. 
Like sometimes when I do clear bottles, it'll have liquid fill, but this crystal trophy is just, it is crystal. <laughs> like That is okay. I'm, I'm hating the front view less and I'm liking this one more. And honestly, I know I'm going to put this on a cream background. So I can probably adjust this a little bit more in um, Photoshop, but I'm having a thought. What if I go ahead and change the background to my brand colors? Let's just see how it looks. Yeah, look at those highlights. Those highlights are popping. Okay, and this is where I'm glad these little renders go like so fast because it helps me really see before I spend too much time going too far into a rendering. Um, waiting like 20 minutes <laughs> like, oh, okay, we're doing the right thing here. But something about it is just feeling kind of like mucky. And I think it's the index of refraction. This tutorial is like 10% Illustrator and like 90% how to use Dimension. All right, I'm bringing down the index of refraction to help hopefully like crisp some things up. Okay, I think I went too far with the index of refraction if I'm being totally for real. I'm gonna drive y'all crazy with this. I should have really practiced more, but final decision, we're doing index of refraction 1.58 and we're gonna send it. All right, now that I've shown you how to add the graphic and tweak all of that lighting, let's go to viewport camera and I'm gonna bring in the graphic as an OBJ so you can see if you wanted it to look like it was glass, this is how you would do it. So here's my file, I've rotated it 90 degrees and I'm gonna get everything synced up. So I'm keeping the graphic on here because I want to get everything placed matching up. So we're moving back in space. And I'm gonna to have to bring the scale down. Let's try 0.6. That looks really close and it's matching up pretty well with the trophy base. Oh, but it's way too far back. So let's bring it forward. And this is just depending on if you want it to look embossed, debossed. Um, these are all tricks for you. So now that I'm on the top and I have the graphic placed, I don't need this reference graphic anymore. So I'm going to delete it and go back to my materials, drag glass over the graphic, and then click on my little circle and see where we're at with it. So I do think it needs to be centered a little bit more with the trophy. So highlighting both of these, the trophy and the graphic, coming over to the align tool and just hitting center. It was already in the center, so that's great news. Um, I'm gonna bring it up a little bit and then also scale it down to like 0.5. I feel like that just gives us a little bit more of like a margin. And then if we go to a render, let's see how it's looking with the glass. It's more subtle, it's more refined, harder to read. So do keep that in mind, harder to read for sure. Um, but again, that can be tweaked with the lighting, it can be tweaked with whatever, but that's an option. You could also make this any material, it doesn't have to be glass. We can go with a metal, let's see how a metal looks. It could be gold, it could be metal. See that almost just looks like a black imprint, which is fine. Um, but if I did a little more roughness, that looks kind of cool, I'm not gonna lie. I might end up keeping that, but let me go to the graphic. You can go to any of these because I've dragged the material over the group. You can go to any of these group um, sub, what calls it like group number zero, one, two, three. You can go to any and change these settings and it'll apply it to the rest until you break the link to that style. So I'm gonna up the roughness to like 0.4 and let's peep how that looks. I like that it looks silver, silver moon. And this trophy is dedicated to my number one favorite designers. Oh, look how awesome that looks. Oh, you guys, I really like how this looks. This just adds that little bit of dimension, no pun intended. Um, some of the shadows are looking a little funky, so I'm gonna do some final tweaks on the lighting, but that'll be about it for me. I think that this was a really fun challenge and um, I hope that you enjoyed learning. And here's the final look after I finished all of my lighting tweaks. All right, designers, that wraps up this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's a video that you'd like to see next, please comment that below. As always, like and subscribe to my channel. Until next time.